one. Hello, St. Mary Magdalene. Thanks for tuning in to another weekly video with me, Father Chris. I'm in the sanctuary. It's been a while since I've given you a sanctuary update. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I've got some dates of what's happening, some kind of concrete, some concrete information that I wanna share with you all today. There's also pictures. So let's, I hope you enjoy this video. First, what I wanted to say is beginning March 13th, so March 13th to March 31st, we're gonna have the installation of the murals that are going on this back wall. Our artists will also be in here painting this portion of the ceiling with the gold stars. So that's gonna run again March 13th to March 31st. Because there's gonna be scaffolding in much of this space, we're gonna lose a lot of the sanctuary and the transepts over here by Mary and Joseph. But other than that, we'll retain about 90, 95% of our church building and of our capacity space. Which means that yes, for those two weeks, we will have some scaffolding up here, but it's gonna be great because we can then see the artwork unfold and day after day, we get to see the progress that's made. So it's gonna be exciting. This also means these dates, March 13th to March 31st, means that by Holy Week, Palm Sunday, which is April 1st and 2nd, we'll have the, the murals complete. So the saints, our artwork, will accompany us during Holy Week. That's very cool, very exciting to have that going. I don't have any additional pictures of that to show you because I don't want to spoil the surprise. So we'll see it unfold together as a community and it's going to be amazing. The second thing I wanted to share with you today is that our new altar furnishings that so many of you generously paid for will be in around the same time as the murals. This means that these pieces also will be ready by Holy Week, by Palm Sunday. And so what we're going to do, because so many new things will be here on Palm Sunday, during all the weekend masses, we'll bless pieces of all the new furnishings so that at all the masses we have a chance to celebrate and to bless and dedicate kind of the, the new pieces that will be in our sanctuary. So we'll bless the art, the candles, the, uh, the crucifixes, the processional cross, all those great things. We'll be blessing all of those kind of during the liturgies on Palm Sunday. So that's very exciting. Third, You've seen in the design drawings, all designs for altars and an amber. We are having those made. We're having a new marble, two new marble altars and an ambo made out of marble as well that will be in the new sanctuary. And thank you to some generous donors. These items have been fully funded, designed, and we're awaiting the, the marble to arrive so that fabrication can begin. These pieces should be ready for installation at Mary Magdalene in early June. So, here are some photos of the altar and the amber. So, first of all, before we do that, you can see again the full design. This is what's going to be installed during those two weeks in March. All the saints across here. We'll have write-ups in the bulletin as well explaining all of these. But, here's our designs for our altars. So you can see this is the altar of repose that will house the tabernacle. This will be our altar of sacrifice where obviously the sacrifice of the Eucharist will occur. So this altar will be a, glory, a, a place of rest for the tabernacle. And this will be the main altar where we celebrate and confect the Eucharist. Some of the design work on here, right, connecting with our mural theme of the heavenly Jerusalem we're following that same theme in our altars as well. So you have, for example, the Alpha and the Omega, right? Christ is the beginning and the end. You have here the Lamb that sits on the Book of Seven Seals. And you have on the side over here, you have, uh, these are peacocks. These are symbols of resurrection that come to us from the early Christian catacombs. So this is a detailed picture, a blow up of the sides. So these will be, on the side ends, on the end pieces of the altar, as you can see again from up here. So these peacocks will be on the sides, so they'll be here and here on the altar in color, so you can see a design of what they're gonna look like. These will be carved into the stone of the altar. 
Again, the peacock is a symbol of resurrection because peacocks resist decay after death. Their flesh doesn't deteriorate as quickly. So the early catacombs in Rome, we see the image of the peacock everywhere because of that resisting death. So the theme of resisting death and resurrection is embodied in the peacock. In the center of the altar of sacrifice, you see this mosaic of the lamb. Again, the theme of the heavenly Jerusalem, right? So you have the lamb sitting on the book with seven seals, the seven seals for the seven sacraments, the seven days of creation. You have the lamb who once slain dies no more. Remember the theme of the heavenly Jerusalem, right? Is uniting all of this art. So we're embodying this in the theme. So this will be again, another full color mosaic. And these are the color scheme that will be there. We're also having an ambo made, right? And again, seeing in this picture, you have the marble ambo. Okay, so roughly uh, what that's gonna look like from the front and from the sides. So the, so the front panel will be this, a mosaic of the four evangelists. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You have a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. Matthew is a man, uh, historically and in iconography, because Matthew gives us a more human portrayal of Jesus. We see Jesus' humanity really highlighted in Matthew's gospel. Mark gives us a lion. Mark is writing to a largely Jewish audience. So he's showing Christ as the lion of Judah, right? from the, li the line of King David. The lion was a symbol of the king of the animals, right? power and majesty. So Mark is really showcasing Jesus' power within the line of David. Luke is an ox. Ox were used in sacrifice in the ancient world. Luke writes to a Gentile audience and a Jewish audience, kind of a mix, but the theme of sacrifice is very heavy in Luke's gospel as well. So the ox is the animal of sacrifice. Then for John's gospel, we have the eagle. John's gospel was written many decades after the other three, after Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So, and John's gospel presents a very high theology of Jesus, very much great emphasis on Christ coming down from heaven, right? The light of the world has entered the darkness, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That whole, that's the paradigm for John's gospel. So it's seen as high and lofty theology. So just as the eagle soars over the other animals of the earth, Right, so is John's portrayal of Jesus, right? This high theology, this high Christology in his gospel, right? Is why he's depicted with the eagle. On the side panels of the ambo, again, on either side, you have this color carving. This is the tree of life with birds feeding from the tree of life, finding nourishment and sustenance. The tree of life is a very common theme amongst the prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, so many of them talk about this theme of the tree of life. We also know the tree of life is in the Garden of Eden at the center. So this prophetic imagery, right, that shows that Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecy and that the cross is the new tree of life. So all of this is going on in our, our ambo. So very rich symbolism. And don't worry if you can't remember all of that, we'll write it down, we'll have it in the bulletins to explain for you. But I did want to share all of this with you. These are things that I've been working on over the last several months, which again, I apologize. It's been so long since I've given you an update, but I have dates and progress and things that I can share with you now. What I also want to do is once all of these pieces are in, so once the mural works in, once the ceiling's painted, once these altars are done and installed, I want to have an open house where everyone from the parish is invited to come in and see these pieces up close. So we'll be able to come in and take a close look at the details and the, and the, and the artwork and just see it and, and have this beautiful appreciation of what is going to soon be adorning our sanctuary. So I'll have more information on exact dates and times for that open house, but we're looking at sometime in June for, those open, for that open house to occur. Again, we're anticipating the altars to arrive and be installed early June. The mural work is gonna be installed March 13th to the 31st. 
Right? You can also see in here in this rendering of the sanctuary, the filling in for these white spaces. They're called friezes, F-R-I-E-Z-E. Friezes, which is very common actually in ancient art and architecture to have imagery in that those spaces on arches. So for us, we're going to have it adorned with a pelican and a phoenix. A pelican being a symbol of the Eucharist, and the pelican will go over here, over the presider's chair, by showing the connection between the pelican, who a, fe a mother pelican will actually pluck the meat off of her own chest and feed it to her infants so that they can survive and that they can live. So she gives her life so her babies might live. Beautiful Eucharistic allegory and undertones in that. So that will sit again over the priest to emphasize that connection between the pelican and the priest who unites himself to the sacrifice on the altar, giving the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. And the phoenix will be on this side. The phoenix will be sit over the ambo. St. Paul in 1 Thessalonians talks about us rising at a word of command from the Lord. So the phoenix, the bird that rises on command, that is brought to new life in resurrection, sits over the ambo, right? The word of God. So again, the allegory there with the word of God and the resurrection and the new life that comes upon us. So that's everything. There's a lot here. I'll make sure that a lot of this is explained in the description of this video below so you can see it here. We also will have write-ups about this on the bulletin or in the bulletin and on the website. So stay tuned and you can read those. And again, at the open house as well, we'll make sure we explain it and we'll have literature available so that we can truly enter into more de enter more deeply into prayer and the holy sacrifice of the mass through the new sacred art that will be joining us in the weeks and the months to come thank you for tuning into this week's video i know it was a little bit longer than my usual videos but i figured it would be worth it with the pictures and the explanation of all of this so uh, again i'll leave you with the image of this we'll focus on this as we close in prayer in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Almighty and merciful Father, we thank you for everything that you bestow upon us so generously. We thank you for the great works that you've brought forth through the community of St. Mary Magdalene. This, we pray that this arch, this, these sacred images will enhance our prayer and deepen our faith and our love and our desire for you in the most holy sacrifice of the Mass, so that we may enter more fully into these beautiful and glorious sacred mysteries and that all things may be done for your greater glory. Bless our community and continue to watch over and sanctify and consecrate all of us in your truth, in your love, and in your mercy. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a great week, and I'll see you on Sunday.